Hello, my name is Bruce Russell. I'm a third generation gold and silversmith working in Guernsey, the Channel Islands. Several of my clients have asked if I could show and explain how items like silver cow creamers are made. Early creamers, the earliest that's really known, are people who are working in London, like John Shoup, working around about 1760. It's quite a difficult item to make from a flat sheet of silver. Basically, we start with a silver sheet and then we draw the body out entirely by hand like this. Just use a marking pen to draw the item out. You can probably see that. There is the, uh, the other half on this section of the sheet here. A silversmith will work basically like this, cutting just entirely freehand, cutting the silver out like this here. Every little off cut that you see, we save in a tray in front of me because the price of silver these days is so expensive we just cannot afford to uh, waste anything. Right, now we've got half of the body cut out, the next operation will be to start to shape it. This is done on a tree trunk here and the process is called blocking. These hammers were used by my father and my grandfather and now my son Simon uses them. So this is really just working just by hand and by eye to now shape half of the body to form the creamer. You can already see now the, uh, the start of it, the way it's coming together. So I'll do that all the way over and then after that I'll have to use a lump of lead, what we call a lead cake, and all different very fine hammers and chisels to shape the body right out. So I'll just do a little bit more on this, then you can see as it comes together. There we go, we're underway now. You can see from the side profile. So what I'll do is carrying, carry on hammering that up till I get it up more like the, the cow body shape that I require. Then I'll do the same with the other half as well. Then the two sections are then fitted together. You can already see on that back section already. Don't worry about all the marks and everything in it because I'll remove those after with a process called planishing which just it's a series of little fine hammer marks that we put over it, resting a stake inside, and it'll actually get the body then shaped perfect. So I'll carry on doing that to get the section right. Well, we're nearly here now. As you can probably just make out the, uh, the cow's body, the Tommy has now got the correct shape, the correct angle into it. Um, I'll use a couple of these small stakes, these tiny little ones here, just to get the final little bit of detail back, back into the cow there. Now the body's completely finished, this half of it, the next operation will be to do um, what we call lost wax casting. Now lost wax casting goes back, it can be traced back to the Egyptian times. It's where you can model a piece of wax and you can burn it, you can burn basically the wax model away and put either silver or gold in it to produce fairly intricate items. This has been completely modelled in wax, as you can see it's hollow and there is the, the little hole there in the cow's mouth for the um, for the cream to come out. On the top here you've got the sprue. The sprue is the feeder, that would have all been in wax bearing in mind, the sprue where the silver would run up to basically form that, uh, that particular item. These will be put in there and then these are silver soldered in when I solder the cow's head onto the body. So we're at the stage now, we've got half of the cow made with the body, as you can see here, and then behind me is another piece here that's going to be, well, it's already been marked out, I'll cut it out the same as I did with this particular one and then I'll go through exactly the same process. It's a labour of love but very enjoyable. Now the two halves are put together, um, the next operation will be to silver solder all the way around the joint here. <laughs> being applied to the body, I'll leave it slightly proud and then I'll remove it after.
Now you can see after all the high temperatures, the, uh, the colour of the silver body, where the flux has moulded all over it. But the next operation now will be to put this in boiling hot water and this will remove all the flux that you can see that's on it. And it'll just go back to a nice, um, back to a nice uh, silver colour. So we'll leave that, let it sink down to the bottom and that's it. Well now the head's been fitted, the next operation will be to uh, solder the, the body and the head together and then I'll just put the horns in at the same time. Now I've just taken the cow out of the boiling water and I've cut the little circle in the top here, the oval door. Uh, as you can see the head's all been fixed and the horns are in. Next thing now is the back legs and the front legs are always going to be now fitted to the, uh, fitted to the cow. As you can see here, that will be then fitted into there very, very finely. And then the next thing will be as well at the same time solder the tail onto the cow as well. do exactly the same on the other side. Get those two put on as well. I'm just going to now seal the solder the tail onto the back of the cow. I've got it basically balanced there because with the high temperatures it's very difficult. You can't hold the item uh, steady. Right now the uh, the cow has got the, the legs on and the tail has been soldered. I'm going to now make a little silver oval that will go on a hinge here and that will then provide the little door to uh, to complete the cow's body. After that, I'll just remove any uh, excess little pieces of solder and any humps and bumps that need to come out. Then I'll use a dental fraser like this to go very, very finely over it to give a fur effect. And then the last thing, I will then just solder the little bead that I showed you earlier on that I've made. That's going to go and be soldered onto the top of the door here. So we're basically now nearly, nearly there. This is the oval door that will uh, form the top of the cow creamer. In the front you've got the gold bee and just at the top a piece of silver tube, what we call chenier, that's used to make the hinges. On the right here, these are the, uh, the high speed spinning dental phrases that we use to give that, uh, that fur effect that you can uh, see on the silver. So what I'll do is I will just put that all over the top section there and then I'm ready to solder the little bee on. As you can see here, the little hinge, I've just soldered that in at the same time. Just a matter of straightening it up and start to do the diamond cut work and the hot water will then remove the, uh, the ready coloured flux that you can see. This is a close-up of the Guernsey hallmarks that are stamped underneath the cow. I've uh, enlarged them slightly on an off-cut of silver so you can see a little bit clearer. But the Guernsey hallmarks um, date from 1974 when I was asked to introduce a hallmarking system and the first Channel Island hallmarks were used from 1975 onwards the next year. They consist of the maker's mark which is, it's, you can see it's like a little triangle shape which is the outline of the island of Guernsey with my initials BR inside. The next mark is the crest of Guernsey which is the royal seal that was granted to the island by King Edward I in 1279. The third mark then is the Guernsey flag. You can see the cross with the 2013 standing for 2013. And then you've got the, uh, the 9.95 and the silver mark. And all the craftsmen working here at Bruce Russell um, have their own individual hallmarks. This includes my son Simon. He uses the same hallmark as myself, but with his own initials set within the outline of Guernsey. Luckily, because the marks are quite unique and different, it's resulted in our silver and gold work that, uh, that we produce becoming well sought over by collectors. Here you can see me using the diamond cutter, starting to put the decoration, the fur effect, all across the body. Once I've done this, I'll then carry it all across the top section. 
Luckily, you're watching me um, explain it to you about casting, so the legs are completely solid. So I can use this diamond cutter, the frays are quite deep. I can cut actually into the silver leg. Here we have the finished cow. Uh, this is a commission piece, so the client has already been in to see it, and they've named it Clara. Um, it'll be nice to think it'll be gracing uh, tables many many years to come. So that's the making of a silver cow, a Guernsey cow creamer. Before I finish I'll show you our premises that we work from in the beautiful gardens. Part of the buildings you can see are traditional stone and they're over 500 years old. They're absolutely ideal for our craft. This is part of the showroom uh, and in these cabinets you can see some of the traditional uh, pieces of silverware that we manufacture. Quite a lot of them have got a yellow lining, that's 18 karat gold that we put in our work. Um, it just makes it look nice and uh, partly like the little shells that you see here. Um, if they're being used they don't mark or need any work doing to them. Uh, traditional Guernsey christening cups through to different types of horns and pierce pieces. We tend to stock quite a, quite a large range of modern and old traditional silver as well. This was the making of the Royal Wedding present for His Royal Highness Prince Charles and Lady Diana Spencer. This was uh, given to uh, the palace uh, on behalf of the people of Guernsey and our island parliament. And you could see me there um, raising the piece up. That's raised completely by hand from a flat sheet of silver. It's quite a lot of uh, a lot of work to, to produce that piece. But we had a lovely letter back from the palace and it was uh, very well received. So this is uh, a part of the, the jeweler's craft, all their, uh, their pieces that they uh, manufacture and um, all the staff that uh, work in the workshop. It's right alongside the showroom here. If I just walk through, you'll be able to see a little bit more. Um, this is completely open to the public and uh, a lot of visitors come to watch pieces being made, which is very, uh, very, uh, very nice. It's a little bit of a different, uh, different sort of shop as such. We are open daily. Uh, if ever you come to Guernsey, feel free to pop in and have a look and uh, come and chat to some of the uh, the jewellers or the silversmiths. Um, there's also a very nice restaurant on site and uh, you'll be made very, uh, very well. Well, hopefully this video has given you some indication of the work that goes in to making uh, silver pieces like this. It's taken approximately around about 42 hours from the flat sheet to the finished item. Hence they are expensive, but I only make around about five or six of them a year. It's just in my line. I get uh, get so busy with commissions for other people. But they're an enjoyable little piece to make. As far as I know, there's nobody left in the world sort of making them by hand. But I'm. Uh, it'd be nice to meet somebody if there is, actually. Um, the video, the quality of the video in places hasn't been as good as what probably you're used to. But uh, I've done it without any form of script or anything else. Um, any sort of prompts as such or no microphones and I recorded the whole item on my on my little phone so uh, this will be the first of several that I'm going to do so just come back um, after you've seen this one and there'll be some other bits and pieces some other sort of unusual commissions that I'm making for people that uh, it'll be nice to just put them down for posterity uh, how these items are made um, I hope you enjoyed the whole video and uh, thank you very much for your time watching bye bye